All right, hello. Welcome to day <clears throat> 59, I believe. It's Saturday the 25th, so I think that's 59 days on the CDT. Um, my previous rain fly was yellow. That's why I had a yellow hue. Um, the replacement is green. That's why I now have a green hue in the tent, in case anybody was wondering. I'll give you fair warning. Uh, I'm going to cough a lot in this video. My lungs are not happy with me. Um, I did something today that I haven't done in a while. I pressed them pretty hard, so we'll get to that in a second. But um, please excuse any coughing because uh, my lungs uh, did a lot of work up and down today. Um, all right, so the day started actually with low morale. And the reason why was um, I did get off to an early start. <clears throat> I was hiking well. I got up the first climb and uh, I was doing a traverse to a second climb. So there was a high point and then we kind of um, descended just a couple hundred feet and then there was a traverse over to another high point. And then we dropped down to um, Cottonwood Pass. And <clears throat> morale was low be for two reasons first um as i was hiking to the second high point i noticed some clouds starting to form and as i just as i was about to drop into the um, descent for cottonwood pass i could see some of the clouds um not only had formed but they were developing and they were turning into what looked like uh, storm clouds and <clears throat> I left Creed on Sunday, today's Saturday, so that's seven days. I've either been rained on, I've been chased by weather, have tried to dodge weather, tried to like run ahead to good weather. Um, basically, I've done the weather dance for five of the seven days. And the two, the two days that I didn't have to do it on Monday and Tuesday, I was hiking between <clears throat> San Luis and the Sawwash mountain ranges. So I wasn't actually in a mountain range, I was in some open space. And I don't know if you want to excuse the fact that mountains make their own uh, weather and it's the monsoon season, um, but the, <laughs> with the flats, we got some clear weather. Um, it was pretty stable. The other five days, it hasn't been stable. Um, so when I saw those clouds this morning, <clears throat> I was, and it was again before nine o'clock in the morning. And um, so I was just a little bit down of, man, I'm tired of running from or, or two or you know around or whatever about weather so that was the first reason the second reason um i dropped down to cottonwood pass which is it's a touristy spot where when you're driving the road you can pull over and park and then i think there's like a high point you can climb like 700 feet to a high point and get some some good camera shots and um it's it's high touristy and as I came down, um, I don't, there was no etiquette. So like I'm hiking and people were expecting me to step off, like it, regardless which direction they were going. Um, there was one gentleman, like there was a couple, it was a lady and a, a gentleman and <clears throat> I stepped off the trail to let the lady pass. And the gentleman said, oh, look, and stopped uh, to look at flowers on the side of the trail. And I said, you know, cool, 10 seconds to look at the flowers, you know, that's fine. But after 25 seconds, I was like, hose this. And I just walked, I got back on trail and walked right by him and brushed him. Um, not purposefully, it was just the trail was narrow. And it's just that the inconsideration um, was, was grating on me. And I was reminded that by the time I got finished with the Colorado Trail, and by the time I got finished with the Pacific Crest Trail, um, I was a, when I went to reenter society and you know do a job and go shopping and all that regular stuff. Um, I was I remember being irritated or graded by people really easily. Um, I don't know if it's the hiker community like we're all in this together and we try to help each other out. Um, because we're all trying to, you know, get to Canada and we all know that <clears throat> we have to deal with, uh, you know, hurts or injuries. 
We have to deal with family or friends, um, you know, issues off trail. We have to um, and budget, and pay bills, um, and and then we got we got to hike miles every day. You know, I think we have to average like 20 miles a day for the entire trail in order to get there in time to Canada. So. I was a bit irritated by the tourism and then I got down to the pass itself, like the parking lot. And there was a big RV there and the Texas, um, excuse me, license plate had Texas on it. And behind the RV was a, um, it was a trailer and there were, there was a big pile of firewood on the trailer. And I looked at that and um, <clears throat> I don't know if Colorado has a fire ban right now. Um, because it's early in the season, but I just hiked across New Mexico and that place is a tinderbox. And I've hiked through parts of Colorado and the snow is melting so fast that as, as soon as the majority is, is melted and <clears throat> like now being in most of the saw wash, most of the snow is melted. And um, if the monsoons don't keep up, this place is gonna be a tinderbox. Like people mention, um, that the beetle kills finished like it you know the last 10 years it's done its job and it's it's pretty much over and that's maybe that's true statewide but i just hiked by a forest yesterday where um half the trees had an orange or a red hue at the top and that's because they're dying and the bottom half they're still green and then the other trees in that forest the other half of the trees weren't touched yet they were all green and that was that was a, a probably last year it was 100 percent of a live forest and this year the beetles gotten into half the trees and is in the process of killing them. And that forest is, by the end of the season, it's going to have half of it. It's going to be dead pole, um, you know, dead trees. And probably by next year, it's going to be worse. And so um, just seeing the amount of um, dead trees that we've hiked through and it limits like our camping and everything else because, you know, they can fall over in windstorms. It just takes a spark. Um, like half of that huge New Mexico fire was a prescribed burn, which is the Forest Service going out and um, purposely setting fires that are controlled in order to reduce the, what's known as the fuel load. Um, so they're basically reducing, um, they're purposely burning dead branches that have fallen, dead trees that have fallen, and then they will also go in and cut stuff out to thin out the forest in order to prevent a massive fire, like a canopy fire that burns extremely hot. And they were supposed to do like three or four prescribed burns in different areas. And the first one they tried, it got out of hands because it's such a tinderbox. And right now, like I said, because Colorado has had the snow melt, but it's melting so damn quick. Um, and the monsoons have been good so far, but if they stop, like if, if, if the monsoons stop and it becomes dry, Colorado is going to become as much of a tinderbox as New Mexico. So like seeing that firewood, and I understand that person could be going to a um, organized campground where they have fire pits and you're allowed to burn and stuff, but just seeing the firewood, um, plus just in consideration of the people, uh, I think it just set me off. So it was a combination of the weather and, and the and the touristy people. Um, it's not their fault. It's mine. It, you know, when you're out in nature for at this point 59 days, and I understand we dump into towns, but when we're in towns, it's we're usually staying around the hiker community folks. Um, yeah, we mingle with some some people, but those people that we mingle with are trying to help the the hiker community. So just like public at large. Um, we don't encounter that very often because the, the cities or towns we go to are not large. Um, like I'm going to go to Silverthorne in <clears throat> what, four days. And that's, I think that's going to be the largest, largest city that I've passed through so far. Um, so anyway, the <clears throat> I think I just spent like seven minutes talking about the low morale. <clears throat> um, so the morale was low. And I was doing a large descent. So it was like a seven mile descent down below 10,000 feet um, before I did another climb. And then after that uh, second climb, I think is the second climb, 
um, is a third climb. So after the third climb, I would have a little bit of an, uh, just a small up and down, and then I get to a trail junction and that was 21 miles and I was planning on camping there because the next hike was uh, 1500 feet and two miles up to Lake Ann Pass. And Lake Ann Pass has still has snow on it, on one side. So my goal was to get the, the 21 miles and do three three significant ups today and, um, and call today and then do Lake Ann Pass in the morning. And I hiked well. Um, like once I got past Cottonwood Pass, I hiked well in the descent. It was a nice clean trail for the most part. Um, we got to hike across a, a pretty flat area for a couple miles. Um, it was dry. There, like, there was a there was a beaver. It was supposed to be a beaver dam and a beaver house that is supposed to be half underwater, and um, the whole thing was out of water. So that I don't know what happened with the flow there, but. Um, that meadow that used to be like a marshy area for beavers it's um it's still got some water like it's marshy but it's not deep enough for the beavers to have their dams um but it was pretty easy hiking just a, that flat area and um you know i ate lunch and after lunch um i finished the descent and i noticed time wise i was doing okay and mileage wise so i I went ahead and, and hiked this, uh, the ascent, the third ascent, and got up to the top and realized that I'd hiked pretty strongly. <clears throat> so I kept on hiking that like that small up and down, up and down to the trail junction that I mentioned before Lake Ann Pass. And I got to that trail junction um, at 445. And I, I mentioned in yesterday's video that when you have good weather, and you still have time you got to take advantage of it um because you you don't know when the weather's going to turn especially here in colorado and the rumor was like the forecast that i had heard a couple days ago was there was supposed to be some nasty storms coming through this the entire saw wash range like the collegiates on saturday and sunday um up to the point when I got to the junction, I had not been rained on. I hadn't had any bad weather. So uh, I don't know if it was, I was just hiking in the right place and everything else was getting hit. I don't know if the storms got delayed. Um, but when I got to that junction, I saw it was 445. I said, I, I gotta go over Lake Ann Pass. I can't, I can't put it off. Yeah, it's another three and a half, three to three and a half miles. Yeah, it's 1,500 feet, um, and then it's another 1,000 feet to, like a descent afterwards. Yeah, it's still got snow, <coughs> and that snow could be um, mush and really dangerous to cross. But um, if I wake up tomorrow morning and it's bad weather and I'm going over Lake Ann Pass in bad weather, then I'm going to kick myself. So, man alive, I pressed myself. I finished the two miles and the 1,500 feet in um one hour and 55 minutes so that's why my lungs aren't happy because i had already done three large <coughs> three large ascents and then i decided to basically run up the side of a mountain um and i made it i got across the snow all right um it's melting out quickly so it's not as bad as other people experienced and then um i got down the descent and got to lake ann and uh it was by that point it was i think 6 35 or 6 45 um and i had been hiking for more than 12 hours so i went ahead and set up my tent the sun was poking out um we did <laughs> at the end of the day i so i threw <laughs> i threw up my tent because it started spitting on me a little bit and um and then i walked down to the lake to get water and it started raining and freezing rain just a little bit like it was maybe three minutes and it, it wasn't very much at all um that's the weather i got today so i got extremely lucky with the weather and then just like last night a big wind blew in and blew some clouds out and um i purposely put my tent in a place that would get hit with sun if that happened and so i enjoyed uh 30 minutes of sun while i um made my dinner and stretched and uh it was it was great to to see the sun because it had been behind clouds for probably half the day and I'd been descending a lot today, so um, I, hadn't, I hadn't actually 
got a chance to enjoy it as as much as um, I would have liked since it was around. So the day ended on a high note. Um, I think I think it was around 24 miles or just short of 24 miles. Um, I know I'm going to pay for it tomorrow because my lungs aren't happy. But now that I'm over Lake Ann Pass, I believe the next, um, like I know where I am. I've been here before hiking Mount Huron and the Three Apostles and Ice Mountain. Um, like I recognize, like I've hiked this stuff before. So what I think happens, I haven't looked at the maps yet, but I, what I think happens is <clears throat> we hike down to the trailhead for um, the Three Apostles and Mount Huron. And then I think we actually um, walk the road. Uh, I could be wrong. They may have rerouted it because it it's been 13 years since I've hiked the CDT. But I believe we hike the road to a point where it goes over, over the ridge. And we just take a sharp left and then suddenly we're doing a bunch of switchbacks up over the ridge. And then we start towards um, Mount Albert and, and Twin Lakes. So... I believe that's what's going to happen, and I'm hoping that's what's going to happen because if that's the case, then my pissed off lungs in the morning can have a little bit of a down and a road walk um, for a few miles and and get warmed up, and and then they won't be so so upset. <coughs> <coughs> oh man, they are not happy. Um, today's shout out is to. Uh, uh, Mother Nature and the weather gods, they blessed me today um, with good weather. Um, like I said, the forecast, like multiple people said the forecast was you're going to get hit with some really nasty stuff on Saturday. And if I was in a, a lucky pocket and everything got hit, you know, around me, then um, thankfully I'm, I was in a lucky pocket. And just a shout out to uh, Mother Nature and the rain gods for, or the weather gods for sparing me today because... Like I said, my morale was low when I saw those clouds coming in by nine o'clock again. Um, <laughs> like five out of seven days is is rough. Like I, I would like to have a stable weather day in the mountains um, themselves, not not traversing between two mountain ranges. Um, but if I could get like a stable day in the mountains where I, I don't have to race um, to get mile, like to get you know fourteen miles by lunch, so that I only have eight miles after lunch in case it rains. Um, like trying to run up these these inclines where you have 15 to 2,000 feet of an incline and then you have a 1,000 to 2,000 foot deep, you know, descent. Um, and then you do it two or three more times that day. Um, trying to run up that stuff and, and run down it because of the weather is <coughs> is rough. So like I said, hopefully, hopefully I can get a stable weather day um, in the mountains and... Uh, and not have to race. That would be that would be nice. Um, okay, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful evening um, and a nice weekend. I hope you're safe. Uh, I'll talk to you folks tomorrow. I don't know. Now that I've done a few extra miles today, I don't know if I'm going to get into um, Twin Lakes tomorrow or if I'm still going to get in the like really early the next morning. So I'll let you folks know in tomorrow's video. Um, talk to you all later.